And I think it, see, it sounds bizarre, right? Nobody sits down on elevator, but if you yeah. ever get a chance, just go in an elevator, like a packed elevator, and just sit down. If you're going for a little ways and just see what happens, it is, uh, it's remarkable. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Tiff and Tony Show. Hello and welcome to this week's Tiff and Tony show. Sadly, Tiff can't make it again today. She has got another conflict. But joining us on this leadership series is my friend, Ed Powers. Ed, good afternoon where you are. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Tony. It's great to see you. Happy to be here. Thank you very much for being here. So, Ed, for our um, uh, viewers here, what is it you do? Uh, Interesting. Uh, Great question. So I'm in transition right now. Uh, but I just finished 22 years as a, a United States Marine Corps helicopter pilot, uh, squadron commander, and uh, I left that in November of 2019. So I'm uh, retired uh, from the Marine Corps, not retired from working. Uh, after that, I spent about a year and a half doing missions work uh, with uh, local churches and ministries uh, in the area, something I wanted to do before I started on my second career. And then just recently, at uh, the beginning of this year, beginning of last month, I started a new job with a consulting firm called Booz Allen Hamilton. So I'm kind of exploring my next my next thing now. So nice. that's kind of where I am where I am now. Uh, my passion is really for, you know, the stuff I do not at work. I have I lead a, a handful of uh, small groups. I have my own home church, um, and really pouring into my community is my my thing. But I fund that, <laughs> you know, with yeah. this uh, with this new role, and then obviously the the retirement I got from being in the service, which was. Uh, generous so that's kind of yeah. me in 30 seconds Tony that's awesome no that's yeah. really good gives us a, a background of uh who you are and where you come from so mm-hmm. so as a leader right so mm-hmm. what was your driving force um and driving factor of becoming the leader you are today hmm it's a great that's a great question uh, if I had to sum it up I would say the driving force was um the relationships people uh and the ability to influence them for the better. You know, the um, as I moved on, I realized that uh, there's a, there's just so many times when somebody's got to take charge. And yeah. as much as we say we want to be the leader, we want the status, we want the position. That's kind of you know, kind of the American way. I'm sure you had the same thing, you know, growing up. But the uh, you know, as much as everybody says they want that, they want to be the person out in front. Um, actually, stepping out and doing that. Um, it's a challenge. And so what drives me? Well, what drove me to do that was the fact that I saw, you know, as I moved into those positions, I was able to affect change and influence things for the better and make it so that people had, you know, the things that they want, they felt, you know, the, the safety that they needed, they got the resources they needed. And, and uh, ultimately, I found out, you know, if I don't step up, somebody else might. And if I'm the, if I'm capable, and I think that I can do it well, then I, sh- then I should step up. And so that was really the driving factor is just being able to uh, build those relationships with people in the new way and then really uh, get the infl- influence for those people to you know to move them forward as well and watch them you know thrive yeah that's awesome and so really kind of gaining skills interpersonal skills is something that would be an important factor for people to understand if they're going to influence change interpersonal skills is something that uh, that they should learn about um okay i love asking this question if you could mm-hmm. travel back in time and give yeah. your childhood self one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh man, that's, that's a great one. Uh, one of my favorites. And so my, I have four adult kids and so they've, they've heard these a couple of times. Um, but I've got two, I've got two. I've got the uh, one's kind of a you know, general human one and then I've got one very practical. The very practical one is, and this may seem silly, it may not be around leadership, but you gotta pay yourself first. And so it's mm-hmm. like a very basic discipline, you know, whatever money you make, take 10 percent of it and put it in savings and don't spend it just leave mm-hmm. it there it's going to hurt and then take 200 dollars a month starting when you're in high school and invest that and you will find that you'll be able to do whatever you want later in life because uh because you did that but it's going to hurt at first it's going to hurt when you're in high school it's really going to hurt when you're in college <laughs> you know uh, but you do it anyway and you find out it's going to put you in a great place and you know i'm thankful that my kids have learned from my lack of doing that and move mm-hmm. forward so that's the first thing i said you know pay first but then the other thing that I think is more, even more important is that people need to know that in life, um, and I, this is what I would love to have learned when I was like in middle school, is there's only three things that you can truly control. We like to say we have lots of control over things, but it's only three things you can really control. And that's what I think, mm. what I feel, and how I act. Mm-hmm. You can master that. If you can realize that I determine what I think, 
about, I determine how I feel about things and that's different than emotions. This is like my interpretation. Like, what do I think about what's going on and how do I feel about this? And then what am I going to do about it? Once you, just, once you realize that that is your human freedom, nobody can take those things away from you. Yeah. Nobody can ever tell you what to think, feel, or do. Uh, they could restrain you, but they can't tell you, they can't control those things. You always yeah. have that. Once you get that in your head, now you're able to, through the rest of your life, set goals that aren't restricted by, you know, things that are outside of your level of freedom. You know, when you know, I, I want to be able to think this way, I want to feel this way, uh, I want to act this way, you're, you're based on principles and you're looking at building your own character. And so your success criteria for life is ne can never be taken away from you. You're 100% in control of it. Whereas a lot of times people will um, think that they're in control of something else like their career or you know, their finances and things like this, but there's all sorts of external factors that can take that away from you. So if you want to have true control of your life, and once you acknowledge those things and focus on thinking, uh, feeling and acting the way that you want to act and the way that you want to present yourself to the world, um, it's hyper liberating uh, as you move forward. We at Pure Game um, teach the concept that your thoughts, uh, there's an external situation. And so mm -hmm. you think something about that external situation, which then drives an emotion and that emotion mm -hmm. then drives this action. And then you've got to go, well, am I, gives you an outcome. And then you've got to answer, ask the question, well, am I happy with that outcome? And if you're not happy with the outcome, the external situation is not going to change. So the thing to change is your thinking. They call it metacognition, right? Thinking about your thinking. If yeah, yeah. you change your thinking, then suddenly you can, you can change how you feel about that situation. Um, yeah. And so, which will then drive a whole different action, which will then give you a different outcome. So I love the fact that, you that we teach our kids <laughs> that all of the time. Okay, so one other, one other question here. Um, what did you do as a teenager um, that could have led to your current level of success? Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll say uh, two things um, that were somewhat unique. There were other people that did them, but the things that I specifically remember focusing on. The first thing was I read voraciously. I read mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. I read books to like help me, like self-help types books, you know, nonfiction type stuff. I read obviously what was assigned to me in school. Um, I love that, but I read a ton of uh, fiction as well. And I read a bunch of stories. And I think that um, helped me uh, to be articulate, to know, to be familiar with those stories, you know, and just have that skill set of being able to go to the written word and, and, and absorb knowledge and then, you know, apply it. It just becomes, it kind of bleeds into you and it becomes part of your, the way you talk and the way you act. And so I think that was hugely important uh, habit that I had. And the second thing I'll say is that I very deliberately, um, you know, my parents had kind of moved away uh, from our church community, but I very deliberately went to church, uh, listened to what I was taught there and worked hard to um, take those principles and live them out in my life. And uh, that was a challenge sometimes in, <laughs> in high school, especially yeah. um, to do that, um, to, to actually live those out. But I think by, by kind of forcing that issue and um, intentionally taking it on myself, knowing like my parents had stopped really doing that. They weren't going to church consistently anymore, but I said, no, I'm going to continue to do this. And I made that decision. Yeah. Um, and then I made the decision to, to pay attention and, you know, take the, that information on board and kind of really make it part of my, part of my character, mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that there were ladies around that might've been distracting or whatever it was that you find at, you know, at church, yeah. you know, I intentionally made that decision to go there and embody those principles. I think those two things really did, you know, if they weren't causal factors, they definitely set me up for success because I've got those principles embedded in me and I just got a whole lot of knowledge. What I heard there really, um, to, to make that simple for our, our viewers, is you were deliberate about choosing two things that were important to you yeah, and, and yeah. deliberate and intentional and you went after them. Um, you know, and, and I think that's important. It's an important skill to um, embody and, and learn about because if you don't, yeah. you can be blown by the wind. And so, yeah, mm. fantastic. One last question as we sure. wrap this up. Um, why do you think it's important that we teach and we focus on teaching leaders at a young age? Mm. Uh, that's a good, that's a good question. So I'll, I'll answer it in, in two different ways. Um, so leaders uh, make 
change happen. So if we want to see something be different than it is now, mm -hmm. uh, it has to be led. Like it doesn't, it's not just going to happen. Um, and so if at the youngest age you realize like, hey, I can be that leader. And it's one of those intentional decisions. Like, hey, I see change. I can step out and start working towards it and, you know, calling other people um, to follow me intentionally. You know, that's just this really powerful. And then another thing that really kind of made that resonate for me as I learned, you know, later in life is that anytime that there is transformation, anytime there's a movement that occurs in any group of people, whether it's, you know, 10 people in an elevator or, you know, 100,000 people in a city, all it takes to get that whole body to shift in a new direction is 10% of the people mm. starting to do something new. 10%, 10% of the people start doing a new thing, they're going to go after it. And those 10% need somebody to lead them to do that. Uh, and for there and so that kind of breaks it down so it makes it not quite as daunting but i love the the elevator story if you go into an elevator like a big elevator and there's 10 10 people in there if one of them sits down as you're going like you know between you know six and ten floors by the time you get to the tenth floor there will be other people that will also sit down because really be like oh i guess that's what we're doing you know <laughs> and i think it see it sounds bizarre right nobody sits down over but if you yeah. ever get a chance just go in an elevator like a packed elevator and just sit down if you're going for a little ways and just see what happens it is uh, it's remarkable but it's that's awesome. 10 percent rule I might actually try that one day. <laughs> yeah, I can see you doing that, Tony. That totally seems like something you would do. <laughs> so that would be fun. This has been awesome. Thank you very much, Ed. Um, if there was one thing you could tell um, the teenagers out there that are going to be watching this, what would you tell them? Uh, I would tell them uh, you've got so much ground in front of you. Like, uh, don't worry so much about what you're gonna be in 20 years, 30 years, mm -hmm. four years. There's so much time. Like I just re realized, I look back on a 22 year Marine Corps career um, and I'm like, wow, look at all that. And then I look the other way, realize I've got that ahead of me as well. You know, and I never had any idea I would be here. What yeah. you really, what they really need to do is look at, you know, what do you want to do right now? What kind of person do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Go after that, you know, keep your eyes and ears open and opportunities uh, will come, you know, pick yeah. something aim for it on the horizon, but be aware because opportunities are going to uh, pop up. Things are going to show up that, uh, that uh, you never could have imagined. And yeah. if you're ready, if you're ready for them, and if you're the kind of person you want to be, um, then you're going to be able to step into them and really excel. I love what you just said there, just to finish this up, pick yeah. the person you want to be. Yeah. Don't pick a career. <laughs> don't pick opportunities, pick the person you want to be. I think that is so important for the youth today to understand that if I am the person the best person I can be and I work on values and I work on uh, being a great person, uh, honest and decent and all that sort of stuff, good things will happen to me. I've got to pick the person I want to be. 100%. Brilliant. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us in this week's episode of the Tiff and Tony Show. We hope you feel encouraged and motivated to keep growing. If you like what we do here at Pure Game, one of the best ways you can support us is by liking and sharing this video with your friends on the social media. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel using the button directly below this video on YouTube, and you can donate at our website, www.thepuregame.org. And with that, we'll see you right back here next time.